What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Money Gang Crypto. Here we are today, and one of the most common principles in crypto is kind of playing itself out. Now, I'm going to give you my kind of prediction. I know over the internet there are a lot of very smart people, people smarter than myself, who have their own predictions. But Bitcoin's price is moving down significantly, and it's really just the reaction of the ETF news. Now, for some people, they believe that it was going to go... Sideways action, we weren't going to get that much of a move down. We're starting to see that move down. And Jim Cramer's even called the top on Bitcoin today as the ETF news has come out and as obviously ETF's been approved. It's the, the, the same old story, the buy the rumor, sell the news event. And it's significant for like having a look at what's probably going to happen when it comes to the halving coming up. All right. But the halving has a slightly different play to it. Let's have a look at the screen and I'll, I'll show you real quick. You can see here straight away, Bitcoin is down 11%. 11% as it rose all the way up to, I make that around about 49K. So it moved up to the 49K mark. It is now sitting at around about $43,000. And an interesting move down about 11% on the charts. Now, when there was this Jim Cramer call, the inverse oracle himself, in, in, inverse oracle Jim Cramer was talking about it being a top sign for Bitcoin. Yeah, usually I go against Jim and I'm not a big fan of Cramer. Now, you never know, this may play out in the next few days where it starts to pump even harder. However, um, well pointed by uh, my friend David James, and you can see this post here, and he was like, I'd not say that too too fast. So this was the original tweet, Jim Cramer. Checking in with Larry Williams, major top in Bitcoin, major. All right, so we saw that and I was like, yeah, you might want to put in your longs if they, if he's calling a top. Moving on to what David had said and shout out to David James, go follow him please on Twitter. He alerted me to these transactions and it was millions of dollars, thousands of Bitcoin moving across to a wallet on Coinbase, which is usually, you know, if you're moving onto an exchange, that is often a significant sign that there's probably going to be some sell-offs. There's probably going to be some price movement to the downside. What was great to see was ETH actually moved up and propelled up. So if we come to my screen here and you can see there was a move up all the way to 2,700. The first time it's touched 2,700 in a long period of time and moving up into that range, got eaten up very quickly and started moving to the downside. We've seen a 5% drop from that point today, which was around about midday, and went down to, we're now sitting around that 2.5 mark. And I was I was doing some transactions. I was actually doing some transactions on the network and I'm like, oh, great. Gway's high, transaction fees are gonna be high. You can see a lot, a lot of the money rotates, right? It goes from the Bitcoin and into ETH and sometimes the alt. But the rest of the market, I mean, if we look at the general markets, they are down today. And it is reactionary, right? Like when we see such a big event, most often not a lot of these big events, we play them up. Everyone plays it up. The, the crypto industry plays them up. The news art articles play them up. The news outlets play them up. They put the adverts out there. All the big influencers go and they start talking about the ETF, the ETF, the ETF, the ETF, right? They're hyping it up, hyping it up, hyping it up knowing very well that most likely, 70 plus percent of the time, there's going to be a major sell-off afterwards. Most likely, they are pushing it up. It's, it's very in, uh, indicative of a top signal. You had everyone talking about, hey, you could get to this price. Crazy predictions, right? Kathy Woods comes out and says her baseline price is 600000 uh, Kathy Woods is the head of ARK Investments. When you start talking about that kind of stuff, as your base prediction, that's my lowest prediction for Bitcoin, it's going to go up further than that, into the millions. We're in Looney Tunes town, right? We start to lose actual good analysis. We see diminishing returns all the time. So if I go back here, this is a staunch, crazy run-up in the 2010, all the way up to July 2011. A big pullback, a big retracement of 94%, and then another major run-up. Right? And all these blue lines, by the way, if you see these big blue lines, they are the BTC halvings. But the major gains have been done, right? Like the major, major, major gains have been done. We have seen that the cycles, as you can see from these boxes here, they're lower and lower and lower, right? 200, 2,160 
3% in the last major bull run. Previously to that, that was tw it was 12,000. Now, the volatility has been going lower right? 87% drop in the 2014 to 2015 bear market. And then we saw in the 2018 bear market, 84% drop. So 3% decrease compared to the previous bear market. And then last year's bear market, 77.98% drop. And we never got that 10k Bitcoin, right? Everyone was talking about the 10k prediction of someone like Richard, we never got that. So I'm very aware that fundamentally, if we've done 12,000 two cycles go gain, and then we've seen a 2,000 gain, then where are we going to go this cycle? My prediction, probably maximum of 95K. That is my, my prediction. I don't think we see past 100K. I mean, people just think it's priced in already. And that overconfidence and that, that overzealous nature does make me think, okay, most of the crypto market doesn't say it how it is. Most of the crypto market is, is kind of trying to stab you in the back. They're trying to get to you, front run your prices. And if that happens in the general DeFi space, I'm sure it happens on the elite level, on the highest level, where we know that traditional finance are now coming in. Big corporations like BlackRock, like uh, Grayscale, Fidelity, Vanek, etc. They do it on a bigger scale in the stock market. They manipulate the markets all the time. So this idea that it's going to pump to the moon and it's going to do, you know, a million, five million, etc. In this particular bull market, I don't think that's true. The rest of the market has been tanking. We've been seeing, look, look at all the, the major coins here, 6% down for Solana, BNB 2.4% down, XRP 3.8% down as well, Cardano 4% down, Avalanche, AVAX down 8.2%, Dogecoin, Polkadot, etc. Polygon... 4%. So the whole market is following Bitcoin, right? We already know that if you've been in the game. You can see, look at the red bubbles here, guys. FTT, really the only one that's gone up 18%. And then Tia up 5.4%. How about us, guys? Well, this is a really cool feature. Go to, if you want to go check it out, this is our own crypto bubbles in the uh, Pulse Chain ecosystem. If I just move across here, as you can see, you know, there's a few more bubbles in, behind my shoulder here. But the big one is this Blast protocol. And correct me if I'm wrong here, but, but the, the Blast protocol is as, as simple as this. There's a sales tax, which is quite significant on buying this particular coin. So you can buy the coin, but there's a major sales tax as you cash out. So you have to be in significant profits to be able to cash out because the protocol then takes that sales tax and I believe pumps it back in. I've not read over it. I've not really looked into it, but I just saw there was a lot of hype on Twitter today. And as you can see, 341% up. It's interesting that a lot of protocols are adapting and they're using, particularly in our space, they're using these ideas of being able to buy up and burn the price away or, or have some sort of penalty for selling. You can see for the day, 24 hours, Hex on Pulse Chain is minus 1.21%. Ink has actually gone up slightly 1.41% and Pulse X 0.36% down. Not much movement, just staying steady. And Pulse as well, 0.49%. Something interesting to take into account. Now, where is this going in the next few months? How's the general market going to do? I'm interested. I mean, are we decorrelated? Are we correlated? That's one of the biggest things about this particularly this kind of bear market as well. We've seen like low lows for this particular ecosystem. And then we've started to see major moves that are slightly different. Obviously, that might be the injection of benevolent wallets and things of that nature. And it's really interesting to see, do we see a bit of a pump in this ecosystem as opposed to the general markets? Because everything seems to flow from Bitcoin. And we do know that the gold well is taking profits or a wallet that seems to be the gold well is taking profits in ETH right now. And ETH just pumped up to 2,700. We know that his mark for sale was about 2,500. Well, let's talk about the general markets first, and then I'll come on to that particular point. I think Capo's prediction is pretty much on. Capo, for those of you who don't know, Capo does, does this TA. He, he puts stuff out, particularly in a Telegram group, and he's got a large following. And I put this up a, a few days ago. You can check this out here. So Capo's prediction was for the ETF was that we saw probably towards that 50K mark and then a major pull down to 30K. You can see that people would be FOMO and IM and moving up towards the 48 to 50K liquidity zone. You can see here, people would be coming into this 48 to 50K zone 
and then Wales would be selling the news down. Bearish confirmation would come in around about this mark here, which would be the 43K mark. For him, he thinks that the first major support is gonna be this mark here, 30 to 31K. Capo's prediction is seeming to be coming true. If we have a look at the top here, right, 49K, just below 49K. So it was that 48 to 50K range, and then a movement to the downside, his prediction around about 30K, we're starting to see a little bit of resistance um, trying to stop this move down coming in around that 43K mark. That is seems to be a bit of a mental barrier, but the realization may come in whereby we see a further bearish sentiment and move further down towards that 30K mark. It's interesting to me to see because we're in this stage where are we decorrelated from the rest of the market? I don't think we're sufficiently decorrelated from the rest of the market. My argument would be this is that we are in a position whereby we are reliant on what's going on on the Ethereum chain. When we see stuff bridging across and when we see movement bridging across, that is the ultimate sign that, hey, we're going from platform A coming over to this platform. And there's only kind of one route or one easy route to come across. Now, if we had more fear on ramps and people were using that in a huge amount of volume, then that would make sense. If we had exchanges, for example, that would make more sense that we start to decouple couple ourselves from that uh, particular blockchain. But Ethereum does dictate what we do as well. So that is why I keep a, a, a close eye on what's going on with ETH and, and the price of ETH. And as you can see, even in this moment now, the price is coming down. We're starting to see some movement down from that 2,700. Be interesting to see over the next couple of days though, is those profits, if people have been taking profits in ETH, was that 2.7 mark as limit orders come in, for example, that we start to see that come into the, into the ecosystem. Hey, you've seen a pump already. I wouldn't be surprised if we see an, another little pump and then there's gonna be some sort of barrier of resistance or the, there's gonna be some sort of set floor whereby maybe the Godwell, maybe, benevolent wallets decide, hey, that's where we're gonna try and hold. And then we move up further along as we move into that Bitcoin halvening. And as the rest of the market start to pump and then we get the economic energy coming from there. I mean, that would be my sort of mini prediction for the next few months. So hold your horses. And if you haven't got your positions in aligned, good idea to get those DCAs in. There are stuff that is really undervalued. My biggest thought is this, there is a lot of stuff that's significantly undervalued. One of the things that I think is undervalued right now is this one here, right? Hex is, is significantly undervalued. Pulse X is still majorly at discount, probably about a f just under a 4X to get to the sacrifice price, which is gonna be a mental barrier. Be interesting to see, but I think again, that's pretty good buying opportunities. Even under this sac rate, things are, Good opportunities because why, why are they good, good opportunities yeah we take pulse for example why are they good opportunities is because at a certain degree at a certain point it's going to be a case where it's going to be at some point diminishing returns to buy this like as we can buy it under sack price we still have an opportunity to make x's but of course the lower it has gone from that point when you measure the 100x or whatever you think it's going up to maybe 250x, whatever it is, the closer we get to that sacrifice price and, and above, you start to get diminishing returns from that point up to the top because we, we price things in from the all-time low to the all-time high. We don't price things in from the sacrifice rate. No one cares outside of this particular ecosystem. No one cares if you got in at the sacrifice rate or below. The performance metric is always from the bottom going up to the top. So you have to calculate and you have to think to yourself, okay, I'm gonna measure from this bottom line here, let's say it's pulse, we're gonna measure from that bottom line and we're gonna work out what 100X is. And then today's price, how many X is it to that 100X price? That gives you a bit of a better idea of, or 50X or 250X or 1000X, whatever it is that you're particularly looking for, you have to ask yourself, is the probability there based off of the lowest possible price point where people could have bought? Not everyone's gonna get that bottom, but there are people who have hit that bottom. There are some people that will have hit close to that bottom. They they may have DCA'd and they may have strategized to hit towards that bottom. Guys, I hope you liked the video. Where do you think Bitcoin's gonna be in the next few days? Do we see a major retracement in crypto? Or do we see movement to the downside? Do we see a little bit of pain 
post ETF and people were thinking that this is going to pump them to the moon and the joy of celebration kind of gets diminished by the actual event itself. Let's see. Like, share and subscribe. Much love. I'll speak to you guys again. Join the Telegram group. Until next time, see you.